So I'm using my Caran d'Ache black pastel pencil. You can use whatever black you have. Um, I'm using this one because it's just darker than the other brands. So this entire um, area right here isn't completely black around the pupil. There's a lot of red and um, really, really dark brown. So I'm not coloring that part black yet. Um, and then right here, there's kind of just a line of black. And then to make sure that this like sudden transition from black to all the creamy flesh tones around it, uh, we're gonna be using a lot of like dark brown and bistray ochre colors, um, just like this other side, so that it looks more natural. We wouldn't just leave it black and then a really light color next to it. I'm also not leaving the spot for the highlights because I'm using pastel mat and pastel pencils, and so I know that I'm gonna be able to add white highlights that are super bright on top of it, even if I don't leave a spot for them. They go over black really easily as well. So as I mentioned, I'm putting this um, Indian red, which is a super dark red around, like in a ring around there. And then there's also a ring of this dark red around the outside of the iris, just like this. I'm also gonna mix walnut brown into both of those reds kind of going between the red and the black for both of them with walnut brown. And then whenever I do this kind of transition work, I usually have to darken the black because I've gotten some other color in it and it needs to be pitch black for this case. Um, next, um, the closest color next to that, kind of in this rainbow eye, is gonna be terracotta. So I'm overlapping this terracotta a little bit with the red color, um, not with the black though. I'm not putting it all the way to the edge because then it won't be a fade, it'll just be like a muddy color. Uh, I'm trying to smoothly get it to go from black to orange with like red and brown in between. And so when I cover up colors that I didn't wanna cover up, I, I'll add them back. For example, here I'm adding the red back, and I'm even going to do some more brown so that you can see a little bit of it in the final result. I'm going to use the brown, the walnut brown, to go a little bit more up here because there's a shadow up top, and so it's not going to have the exact same colors as the rest. They're going to be like only the darker colors. I'm not putting yellow at the very top, for example. Okay, next in the rainbow is going to be yellow. So this is um, yellow ochre. And again, I'm only, I'm trying to at least, only overlap this with the terracotta, which is kind of our orange here. Um, just because I don't want it to get into the black or the darker colors and muddy things up. I'm adding my terracotta back. And adding these colors back just again and again, um, makes it look more smooth and more realistic and just soft. I think we need some more brown and red again. And a big part of this is making sure your pencils are sharp enough to do it. Because if they're not sharp enough, then you're going to be mixing colors that you don't want to mix and it's gonna be a bit more muddy. I'm going to put the yellow back in a little bit and this time try not to get into the red part. After yellow, I'm gonna, I see green. So I'm gonna, gosh, sharp this is. I'm gonna get the earth green and just lightly put that in. Again, I'm not, I'm trying not to get this into like the orange or the red or anything like that, just overlapping with the yellow and the white paper. And this green color can actually travel all the way up here because it's pretty dark. 
Okay, now I'm gonna use ochre just because this color, the eye color is a little bit more ochre than it is the colors that I've already put down. So just lightly over everything. I'm blending them all together with this 182 of the Faber Castell set. And then to go from the red outside the pupil to the green, I'm going to use walnut brown to very, very lightly blend between those two colors. And again, I'm going to fix the black and make sure it's super dark. Before we do any more detail, I'm going to do this spot that I've left white. First of all, I made... I didn't color all the black in yet, so this top part is actually also black. And this white line, if you look at the reference, it looks very pink. So I'm going to start with a light flesh pink here. And I'm just going to color the whole thing in. It's not a very bright uh, white part of the eye. I also see some of that really dark red, so I'm using my Indian red again. That's the 192 color of the Faber-Castell set. And then some brown on either side, like right here and down here. Um, and the reason it's on both sides and not in the middle of that white it's not really white on that strip, is because the bulge of it is where I'm gonna highlight it. And the bulge part of an eye is like right here. Like that's the part that's closest to us, if that makes sense. Just blowing off the black. Um, when I blew the black away earlier, uh, it got onto the nice fur that we had just done earlier. Now I'm using the brown to blend the black that's on top with like the orange and all that that's right here just to make sure that shadow makes sense and using a color shaper to blend that all out. I'm not gonna really use it um down actually I might do a tiny bit but I don't want to make it muddy so I'm leaving the lighter parts generally unblended for now. Um, okay. There's actually a tiny black spot in the eye, so let's do that. There we go. Might be a tiny bit more brown than black. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to use this cream color, um, just because it's sharp and yellowish, and I'm going to do, just like the other eye, some squiggle marks. Don't always do these sorts of squiggle marks, but I see them in this reference, so I'm going to do them. If you're having trouble seeing them in this reference, or any reference at all, you can look at um, those professional, like, super high quality photos of human eyes or any eye in general and you'll see these crisscrossing really cool patterns in the eye um, so that's what I'm trying to do basically a lot of the time with my commissions I add detail in that's not even there but this time it sort of is so um, I am adding it I tell my customers if because I do pet portraits um, I tell my customers if like you send me a better reference photo with more detail, um, then the, the portrait will have more detail. <laughs> um, and they still send me the blurriest things, even though the pet is like still alive and sitting right next to them. And I wish that I could go photograph all of my clients' pets for them, but it doesn't work that way, because they're not all local. Just putting a bit more green and maybe some red right next to the pupil, as well as yellow. This is a cream color, actually not just yellow. 
The reason I'm not using Caran d'Ache for this detail part is because, or the Caran d'Ache brand, is because um, Faber-Castell is really good for details because it has like a hard tip that um, makes fine lines. Whereas um, Caran d'Ache will just make really, really vibrant, but more like thicker lines. Okay, let's just fix the black outline one more time. There's also kind of a point right here that I missed. And I'm gonna put some red over there, just cause the corner of, you can't see the red very well, but you can tell that it's a reddish tinted black. Um, okay, now let's do detail. I mean, not detail, highlights, just one second. Okay, I always do my white, like, sorry, um, the dots, the, the white highlight dots, um, with my Caran d'Ache Chinese white pastel pencil, just because it's the brightest one. So, first I make a very light, just touch, with because it's hard to see the tip of the pencil sometimes, especially if it's not sharp. So I just touch it once and look, is that the right spot? It is, so I'm gonna do it again. But this time press really hard and just move the pencil a tiny bit, while pressing hard, that that was it. And then I lift, and it was that. So I'll do it again to make it bigger, like that. And then there are a couple more of these, like right here. And doing more dots actually makes it look more glossy. Like especially if you have a couple dots on one side or a couple lines or something. If you're making a line on an eye, you want to make it sort of curved so that it goes with the bulge of the eye. And then a way to make it look glossy is put some highlights on one side and then some like maybe smaller highlights on the other side maybe in the form of this like water line here or just the wetness that occurs on the corner of one's eyes on this side okay the, the white dots and the black were not correct but as you can see it looks pretty cool now um it's still missing something, it looks off, and the answer to that is that um, there is no transition. You see why it's important to do transitions. This black next to here just does not look natural at all, whereas this side definitely does look natural, this other side. So the way I'm gonna fix that is I'm going to put this walnut brown, just cause it is a warm color. It's close enough to black, as you can see. It like blends smoothly with black, unlike the light colors. Um, and it's a warm color, and this, this part is also warm. If I was drawing like a gray dog or a blue parrot or something, I would be using a cold gray to do this part. So the brown, if you look at the reference, actually goes a bit higher than that. There's like little eyelash looking, they don't really look like eyelashes, but sort of. Like this. And then they also, they change direction here. They're always like, the, the root of the hair is starting next to the eye where the black is, and then it's just going outward. And all the way around, keeps changing direction and turning. And it's really magical. This is, this like, this direction of this fur is lining up with all the directions of the fur we did before. It's all just around the eye. You start next to the eye, and then you just follow the direction of the fur that you've been doing this whole time. And it turns out that whole direction of the fur was just around the eye. I don't know, I find it really cool how I'll be working on a section of fur and then I move on to the next section of fur and the directions of fur, like right here, actually you can't see that part, can you? Like right, right here, they merge and I find that really cool. Okay, and the black, not the black, the brownish color continues, except it's a bit more green under the eye, which I will fix. Or I'm gonna add green in a second. So now we have another problem. We have brown and it's going into this like really light color and that's also not okay. It also doesn't look right. So we're gonna use ochre, which is between brown and this other color that we have. And I'm not looking at a color wheel. I've never looked at a color wheel in order to figure this out. Um, I'm self-taught, so I can't really help you figure out what color is in between. Just make sure that if they're warm colors, 
if you're using a warm color to go between them and that it's just if there's a light color and dark color it should be like between them like medium you know uh, and I'm sure I could have used a lot of other colors to achieve very very similar results so don't go chasing like the exact number of my pencils don't feel the need to pause the video and then try to like read the number on the pencil because I mean I should probably be better about telling you the color names but if you're using some sort of ochre it should work and again, if you have any color questions, please let me know, or just any questions at all. Um, I would love to help. And you can show me your drawing, even if you've like drawn like something else, it's not even this tutorial, and you want advice, um, you can totally message me. Okay, and then to more smoothly go between this black and the brown, even though the whole point of this was to go smoothly between the two, um, I'm going to put some black marks and just go between the black and the brown with black in the direction of the, the brown color, like this. Like, not all the way to the edge of the, of the brown part, but just a tiny bit. Okay, there's also this kind of eyelash part, and I don't know if they're actually eyelashes. Let me find a good pencil for this. I'm gonna need to sharpen this pencil. I'm actually gonna open a new pencil sharpener because my old one died in the last video. Okay, this is what a brand new sharpener does. Again, this is a very cheap pencil sharpener. Look. It's very cheap, and the reason I buy them cheap is because I want to buy them in bulk so that I can just keep using, like, I don't know, keep changing them once every couple of pieces so that my pencils stay really sharp with very little effort. If your pencil sharpener is breaking your pencils, that means that it is old. Um, it means that you've used it for too long, and it might seem like you've only sharpened, like, 15 pencils, but that might literally just be enough to kill that pencil sharpener. Um, so get a new one. <laughs> I spent a long time just refusing to buy a lot of pencil sharpeners and, um, working with really dull pencils, but when I finally decided to, like, okay, I'm gonna try keeping my pencil sharp for this entire piece, it would turn out amazing. It's such a big difference. So anyway, I just did this eyelash looking thing, like, on the other side as well. Um, it kind of starts not exact there's a little bit of black above it usually when this happens it's like almost at the very top of the black part of the eye if that makes sense but it's not and then it just goes down and horses have it as well like a lot more than dogs do but um this dog seems to have it so i added that in okay what were we doing we added the black, um, I guess we're just gonna keep trying to make the transition smoother here. So this is a light flesh color, and it goes well with the ochre and terracotta that was down here before. Actually, I lied, that part's not that light. Um, let's darken that up again. This is Bestray, so... Bestray is kind of a, just a good color to go with olive green. Not olive green. Well, I'm sure it goes well with olive green too. Earth green is what I meant. Um, it's pretty close as far as like close colors go. Like this, I don't know, they just work well together. So whenever I'm using green, I'm usually using Bestray as well. And then let's put some walnut brown in it as well. Okay, I feel like the transition right here isn't smooth, so I'm gonna put some more black that's kind of spiking out 
And then I'm going to use the ochre color to make some lines that are overlapping with the black like this. I also have to go to school soon, so this will probably be it for today. Well, maybe I'll draw after school as well. We'll see. But I have to finish this by Christmas, so I'm pretty sure I can do it. Um, the issue is, like, there's still a while until Christmas right now, but um, the problem is that I'm leaving for vacation, and so I have to finish it before then. And so I have until, like, I have four days to... Yeah, four days to finish this. It should be enough. And today I was talking to some other Patreon members and they were saying they would like to see an owl, which is great. So the two things that people have requested so far is the clouded leopard um, with the black background. And they want it to be... I think you guys want it to be on the smaller size because the bigger sizes take a really long time as this one is taking. They look better when they're on the bigger size, but um, so that it's better for like lesson content, I will make it smaller on the smaller size. And then also the owls, that's going to be really fun. I might do the two owls on the bigger size though because there's two of them and then I can just do a lesson on one of them. We'll see. Okay, and that is the eye and the surroundings of the eye. Um, I hope that part was useful, and yeah, now we will continue on to the next part.